Hey everybody, I wanted to share with you a, a pretty cool watch I found, um, which I feel can be a nice alternative to the uh, two-tone version of the Omega uh, Aquaterra. Um, as you can see here, this is the uh, 41 millimeter Aquaterra, uh, one of my uh, absolute favorite watches. And uh, while it is lovely, uh, I've also always been interested in the uh, two-tone versions of this watch. And um, if you've ever checked those out, uh, while it is true they are very beautiful, um, here you can see the uh, two different versions, the older on the left, the newer on the right. Um, they also happen to be very, very pricey. I just took this little uh, screenshot from Omega's webpage, and as you can see here, uh, the prices for their gold models are quite high. And so as an alternative, uh, I found this uh, Hamilton Jazzmaster, also two-tone, somewhat similar dial configuration, and uh, I want to share it with you. So here it is side by side with uh, one of my uh, Aquaterra's. Uh, case size is very similar. The Hamilton is 40 millimeters. The lugs, lug width on both of them is 20 millimeters. So dimensionally quite similar. Um, obviously we're talking about a watch which is a fraction of the price of the Omega. So uh, it would not be fair to compare them as, uh, you know, equals obviously the uh, Omega is a much better built watch but for its price I think this Hamilton Jazzmaster uh, does an excellent job it's um, quite well built uh, it looks good and uh, it is also quite comfortable um, I'll show a shot of the watch on uh, my wrist in a, in a moment um, but here's another view the case has a very nice detail um, on the crown side, as you can see there, the bracelet, while it uses uh, friction pins rather than, you know, screws like the current Aquaterra does, uh, is actually really nicely made, really articulates uh, fluidly. Here is the watch on my wrist. Uh, I think the PVD gold coloration uh, does not look too bad. Uh, sometimes on these watches where they use a PVD coating, the gold can look uh, quite fake. Uh, I think in this instance, it doesn't look t that different from uh, from actual gold. Uh, and I've compared it side by side with, with the watches I, I have, which have gold on it. Um, here's a view of the underside. Again, the bracelet is actually quite nice looking and quite comfortable. Something that I think is very impressive, um, especially for the, the actual price of these watches. I know the M MSRP is, is 900 something, but, but in... In reality, you can find these in the you know, you know four to five hundred range, I believe. Um, I also like the uh, uh, day date complication this watch has. Uh, there are Aquaterras with the day date feature, um, and those are features that that uh, push the price of the Aquaterra even higher. So um, it, it, it's an interesting contrast with a watch uh, like this, which is so much less expensive. Here's the case back. Again, I wanted to show on the right there, the case back on the Aquaterra, you know, is a, is a work of art. Um, but I think, again, for the price that uh, this Hamilton goes for, the, the case back and the view of the movement, uh, it's, it's quite attractive. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I do love uh, the, the Omega uh, Aquaterra very much, as anybody who's seen my other videos can attest. Uh, however, I'm always interested in, in looking at uh, alternatives, especially when it comes to something like gold. Uh, I would not wear a watch with gold in it daily. It would be something very occasional. And um, for occasional use, uh, I am uh, you know, more than comfortable to find something that's uh, a lot less uh, pricey than an Omega. So again, let me know what you think about this uh, Hamilton. I think it's a nice looking watch. Uh, especially for the price and uh, thanks for watching